Hello and welcome to Project Management 101. What exactly is project management is typically a question I get. Project management is applying knowledge and skills and project management tools to projects to ensure that the end result is delivered in the best way possible, to ensure that the product, the service, or the result that you intend to deliver is delivered the best way possible such that the client, the customer, the stakeholders, the end users can reap the benefits of that deliverable. That is really what project management is in a nutshell. You might have heard the definition that says project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to deliver an end result. All of that. But when you boil it down to be a great project manager, you need to have great people skills. If you cannot get along with people, it will be very hard for you to work as a project manager. I tell my project management students, you gotta be a people person before you're a project manager. Being a people person means you're able to get along with people, you're able to leverage influence, you're able to leverage soft skills and the execution of a communications approach to those stakeholders to get buy-in, to build trust, to get them to come along with you. That's really what it is. Lots of you are already project managers in plain sight. You're already project managers, maybe in disguise. You don't know you're a project manager. But if you are managing a temporary endeavor, and if you are delivering an end goal, a deliverable, a final deliverable to the client, to a customer, and that ends the project and you move on to another, you're really managing projects. And that's really what project management is. So I'm gonna show you really quickly a few definitions today in project management in the next five minutes, just to get you up to speed with what project management is from a pragmatic standpoint. So what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. We refer to that as a deliverable. Projects start and end, unlike operational work, which continues throughout the life of an organization. So doing the same thing day in, day out is not a project, that is an operation. What is project management? The application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to produce a specific deliverable. So what do project managers do on a day-by-day -day basis? Project managers are involved largely in communicating. They're involved in planning out a project. They're involved in ensuring that everyone on the project knows where the project is headed. Everyone knows the plan. A typical day in the life of a project manager could be get to work, have meetings, find out status of projects, call other team members, find out if milestones are gonna be met, get together with team members, create plans, create documents, create an awareness, monitor risks, calculate budgets, estimates, and things such as that. So I'm gonna wrap this up by showing you the 10 knowledge areas of project management and the five process groups. Every project can be broken down into five groups of things. These are not phases, I would rather you look at them as groups. One, the groups of things you do to initiate a project, that is to authorize it and to put it on the company map. Then you plan the project. You plan the triple constraint, the schedule, the cost, the scope. Now you also plan risk and quality and resources and procurements and stakeholder engagement and how you integrate the whole thing. There are many things you plan, but ultimately you come out with one singular plan that encapsulates all of these tiny little plans and baselines. We call this a project management plan. Now, when you're done with this, of course, you execute the plan. We call that executing. And then you monitor and control the plan to make sure it's going according to plan. And then you hand over the deliverable, close the phase or the project. That's pretty much what it is. So I'm going to be showing that to you here. And we call this in project management, the five process groups. So the five process groups are initiating the project, planning the project, executing the project, monitoring and controlling the project and closing the project. Again, these are not phases, 
these are just groups of things that you need to do. Now, they may flow sequentially on some projects, but not every single project has these flowing sequentially. You might do this in iterations. Keep that in mind. In addition to this, there are 10 areas of knowledge talked about in the Project Management Body of Knowledge Guide, and these are integration, scope, schedule, cost, quality, resources, communications, risk, procurement, and stakeholder management. In a little bit more detail, integration is the overall coordination of the project work. Scope management is identifying all that needs to be done and managing just that. Schedule management is developing a project schedule and managing it. Cost management is estimating task cost and budgeting the final total. Quality management is all about identifying quality targets and meeting them. Resource management is about managing human resources, equipment, material supplies, and facilities. Communications management is about planning and managing project communications. Project risk management is all about planning for and managing uncertainties that impact the project. Procurement management is about managing contracts and procurement. And last but not least, stakeholder management is all about managing stakeholder engagement. And those are the 10 knowledge areas. There is a mnemonic for this. I saw six Cubans quietly rolling cigars, really puffing smoke. Now, my healthcare company friends don't like that one, so I've got another one for you. I saw six chipmunks quietly roasting coffee, reading poetry stories. Take your pick. Which one will you use? Chipmunks or coffee? Really depends on you. Anyway, moving further ahead, we've got the knowledge areas broken out a little bit further, and I'm going to be going through them very quickly, one by one. Integration management. We first develop a project charter, then we develop a project management plan that guides the project. The project charter authorizes the project, and then we direct and manage the project work. And as a result of that, we're going to get deliverables, and we also manage project knowledge which means we create lessons learned and we share lessons learned and knowledge. We monitor and control the project at large. We perform integrated change control and then we close the project or phase. In scope management, we plan how to manage scope, how to collect the requirements, and then we collect requirements. So in this one, we're doing two things in plan scope management, planning how to manage scope and planning how to manage requirements and then we go into collect requirements to collect the requirements, and then we whittle down the requirements and we define what needs to be done to get those requirements. And then we create the work breakdown structure, then we validate scope, which happens in monitoring and controlling. When all is said and done, there's a big jump between here and here because one of these groups is planning and everything else happens in the monitoring and controlling process group within scope management. So keep that in mind. Everything here on the screen right now is planning. Boom, we're just into monitoring and controlling. And in validate scope, this is where the customer, the client, is validating that the work was done and the deliverable is good to go. Control scope is where you prevent scope creep and people adding extras to the project. Schedule management, we plan schedule management, we define the activities, we put them in order, we sequence them, we estimate how long each activity will take, then we put everything together, we develop the schedule, and then we control the schedule. In cost, we first of all plan how to manage cost, then we estimate cost, we determine the budget by rolling up all of those estimates into a final total, and then we control the cost, just like that. Quality management, first of all, plan quality management. How are we going to manage quality? What quality standards do we need to adhere to? Then we manage quality. Manage quality means we check to make sure our processes are going according to plan. And then we can talk about controlling quality. The code name for manage quality is quality assurance. Control quality, this is where we check the product ourselves as the performing organization. 
resource management. The first thing is to plan how to manage the resources. We develop a plan for human equipment, material supplies, and facilities. And then we estimate activity resources. We estimate what we call the resource hours or the effort. And based on the effort, we know how many, how much, what type, what quantity of resources, human equipment, material supplies, facilities. And then we acquire the resources. And then we specifically develop the humans, the team. We train them, we coach them, we mentor them. And in manage team, this one, this is where we give them feedback and we make sure that the team members are right where we need them to be in terms of training, in terms of performance. And lastly, we've got control resources. And this is where we ensure that the physical resources were used as they were planned to be used. And if not, we get the project back on track by influencing people to release those resources to us or to do what they should. Communications management, we want to plan as usual what to do. The W's, five W's of communicating. What, when, where, why, who, how. And then we manage communications by actually communicating. And then we check to make sure that communications are going according to plan. Risk management has got seven processes. First, we plan how we're going to manage risk. Then we identify risks. Then we qualitatively analyze the risk. And then we could quantitatively analyze the risk, not that we have to. And then we plan the responses to the risks. We implement the responses to the risks. And then we monitor the risks. You update your risk register. Procurement management, plan. Which contracts should we put in place? Do we need any contracts to start with? You make a make or buy decision. So you carry out a make or buy analysis, you get a make or buy decision, you decide your source selection criteria, you decide your procurement strategy, and then you conduct procurement. You go ahead, you advertise, you have a bidder's conference, you negotiate, you select a seller or sellers, you award a contract, and then in control procurement, you manage that contract, you control that contract, and you ensure that that contract, which we call an agreement, is doing what it is supposed to, giving you that final product service or result, meeting those milestones, meeting those agreements. Last but not least, we've got stakeholder management. We identify our stakeholders based upon who your stakeholders are and what their level of power is, what their level of influence is, what impact they can make, how legitimate their involvement is, all that stuff. You then create a plan for how to engage them. And then you manage stakeholder engagement. And lastly, you monitor stakeholder engagement. Manage stakeholder engagement is actually engaging with the stakeholders. Monitor stakeholder engagement is checking to make sure that your engagement strategies are indeed working. Now, if you are thinking of taking a professional exam like the PMP exam, well, let me disclose to you right up front. There are several other appendages to these processes. Every process has an input, a tool and technique, and an output. Each one of the 49 processes I went through has got its inputs, its tools and techniques, and outputs. And that is what makes the Project Management Body of Knowledge Guide, also known as the PMBOK Guide, a rather interesting read. Here it is. 756 pages of fun, hopefully. And that, my friends, is my very, very quick introduction to project management. If you are looking to become a project manager, you need some direction and you need to know what is going on under the hood. The way to know more is to study. I want to invite you to study with me. To do that, you want to go to the website praiseon.com. I'm going to show you on praiseon.com the course that may be best for you to get some more information. So if you go to the praiseon.com site, click on more products, and this website may look a little bit different when you go there, but ultimately you want to go to this project management night school. That is a great course for you to study. 
It says a great entry-level course for those seeking to know how to break into project management and be gainfully employed project managers. Gain new knowledge about the standard for managing projects. If you are starting a project management job tomorrow and you're wondering, hmm, what do I need to be successful? You might want to click on day one on the job. Okay. If you're curious as far as what makes project management success, you might want to go to this curriculum on what is project success versus failure. And if you are a PMP already, project management professional, and you just want something that can improve you, go to life after the PMP exam. You can get that, or you can get 10 power steps to professional success. Get Enriched in Project Management or Project Failure, Seven Symptoms and Several Remedies. If you are looking for training and coaching for your team, maybe your team just needs a little bit of help in their project management, why don't you drop us an email, support at praiseon.com. Many clients across the world have benefited from our training and it will be an absolute pleasure to train you and your team. Thank you for joining me today. I wish you all the very best. Take care and bye for now.